Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for FloatTheTurn.com and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to talk about health and fitness, which is a topic that's sort of like near and dear to my heart because I have pretty much transformed myself over the last few years from being not in great shape to great shape. So let me go ahead and get into this. Uh, I've created this slideshow. This slideshow is actually, well, it was made for the anti-up cruise. So let's go ahead and get into this. First off, I am not an expert. I don't claim to be any sort of authority on nutrition, health, fitness, or anything like that. I just want to be able to tell you guys how I have significantly changed my life for the better and how I think you can do the same. So take this for what it's worth. I'm definitely not a professional nutritionist or trainer or anything like that. All right, seven years ago, here's what I look like. It's kind of a big guy. Um, I was 40 pounds heavier, couldn't run a mile, and I was generally weak. I mean, I never really even thought about nutrition. I would just always do whatever my parents told me. You know, they would feed me chicken pot pies and ice cream, and that was just standard. You know, that was just what, what you ate. And, you know, you just didn't go work out. It was kind of like a, a pain to get up and go outside and go running or throwing the ball or anything. And that's certainly not good. You know, you have to get out and you have to be active. And if you don't, you will gain tons of pounds. And there are actually quite a few poker players that fall into the habit of just eating whatever they want whenever they want and it is a huge leak because you know four or five years down the road they're just going to be huge and that's what happened to me when I got out of high school I weighed maybe 150 pounds and I got up to about 185 pretty quite pretty fast like within two or three years and I didn't really even think about it no one told me about it no one said anything and I just ballooned then one day I looked down and decided you know I'm kind of getting fat I don't want to be fat let's get skinny so now, I um, guess I look a little bit skinnier. Um, currently, I'm thinking about a pretty healthy weight. I weigh about 142 or so, which maybe I could lose a few more pounds in the belly, but that's fine. I've run a marathon and two half marathons, which we'll talk about those in a little bit. And I think I'm generally strong. You know, I'm, I do a, a lot of exor- body weight exercises in particular, and I'm generally pretty agile. So let's get into how I did this and how you can do the same. First off, why fitness is important, at least in my opinion. Uh, you know, really the main thing, it may sound a little bit crazy, is that you can actually control the results, unlike poker. You know, in poker, you can play really well for a really long time and do really bad. And by the same note, you can play really bad for a really long time and do pretty good. I mean, there are a lot of guys that are, are certainly not good at poker, but they have run hot. And sure enough, they're big, big winners in the very short term. And there are a lot of other guys that are very good poker players in the relatively long term they've had poor results and fitness unlike poker has very little variance whatever you get into it you're probably going to get out of it unless you have some sort of genetic disability or whatever the opposite of a disability is an enhancement or something um you know of course, of course some people are naturally gifted for athletic things i'm unfortunately not one of them i'm kind of a small guy with crappy knees and you know i'm not gifted in that sh- situation but that's okay you know you can still get something out of it. You don't, you don't have to just resign to be unhealthy. Uh, so yeah, there's very little variance. Uh, whenever you get in shape, you'll generally feel better. I mean, I feel pretty great right now. I mean, I ran a pretty, pretty long way yesterday and I feel perfectly fine and you know, you just feel better. You'll, you'll also live a longer, healthier life. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, if I live longer, I don't want to live longer if I'm just going to be a feeble old man or something like that. But in reality, what's going to happen is you're going to have many healthier years added to the end of your life. So if you would normally die at, say, 60, instead you'll die at 80, but you'll be in good shape for most of those years. So it's not like you're adding on crappy years of your life, which is something I always used to think. I'm like, well, what's the point of living if I'm just going to be in a nursing home or something? But that's not the case. If you take care of yourself, you won't be in a nursing home. You'll be one of these little old men walking down the street as if he's 50 years old, whenever in reality he's like 90, and that'll be great. Uh, you'll also be able to develop a lot of discipline, which is useful in all aspects of life, particularly poker. Um, you know, if if you know you have to go do something, then you're just going to do it. And if, if you can make yourself do things like, you know, do X amount of push-ups or pull-ups or whatever, and you can stick with a schedule, you're going to find that that will really give you some a nice solid foundation in your life that doesn't really change, that just sort of makes life easier to grasp. I guess that sounds kind of silly, but it gives you a firm foundation, whereas a lot of poker players just really have no foundation whatsoever. They're constantly traveling and going to new places, doing new things, and you need to have something to fall back on whenever things are not really going great. At least I do. 
All right, my personal goal. I wanted to have useful muscles, but not be muscle bound and useless. So you see the guy on the right here. This guy has these giant muscles that are effectively useless. He probably can't tie his shoes or unzip his zipper or scratch his back. And that's, that's just useless. That's ridiculous and not practical. This guy over here has extraordinarily strong muscles. If he tried to bench press as much as this guy, he probably couldn't, but that's okay. He could do certainly a, a comparable amount. And he can do all sorts of agile stuff. And I want to be like this agile guy over here that can, you know, do these type of flag moves and basically anything you want with your body. You know, you want to be able to move your body in any way you feel like, whenever you feel like. And you, you want to be able to do it powerfully. So, at least that's my goal. Anyways, here's how I first started changing things. Whenever I was maybe 21 years old, I decided... Actually, not 21. I guess I was more like 23 or 24. I'm currently 28. 28? 27? Man, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm something like that. 27 or 28. Um, I first changed my diet. I stopped eating. Stopped eating. Completely stopped eating. Grains, which are basically things like rice, bread, cereal, and pasta. I love pasta, by the way. Starches, like potatoes. Sweets, candies, desserts. I, I never really had a, can a problem with sweets too much. And I guess I never never really had a sweet too, so I got lucky in that in that manner. But I kinda got unlucky on the pasta end because I love pasta. Uh, lots of fruit. I stopped eating you need to stop eating a lot of fruit because fruit, despite being healthy sugar, is still sugar. And a lot of people don't really think about that. And I, I certainly didn't whenever I first started eating healthily. I would still go get like a jamba juice, a you know, a sixty four ounce jamba juice thing that's just full of fruit. Pure fruit, you know, not not even much much fruit juice and just pure fruit, but still, it'll make you fat if you don't get up and go work out pretty hard either before or after drinking it, and I certainly wasn't doing that. So, you have to avoid lots of fruit. Uh, most sauces, stuff like barbecue sauce, teriyaki sauce, etc., usually those are very high in sugar, which should also be avoided. Uh, bad drinks, which is pretty much anything besides water, unsweetened tea, and unsweetened coffee. And I know that's... Actually, I think this is one of the easier things for me to cut out. Whenever I was maybe 19 years old, I realized I was drinking like two, two liters of Coca-Cola a day, and it was messing up my stomach, and I just felt like I needed it because I was obviously addicted to caffeine. So I just cut it out cold turkey one day, and I was miserable for about a month. And after that month was over, I was okay. And sure enough, I don't have near as many stomach problems. I, don't, I virtually have none now. And that's just... I don't even know how many calories are in a bottle of Coca-Cola, but it's got to be a lot. It's that amount of times, too, that's just all of a sudden out of your diet. And if you cut out, say, 1,000 calories a day and just a liquid that provides you no actual nutrients or anything, you're going to find that you will get skinny pretty fast. So I think most people can really cut out the bad drinks. I think that's something very easy for most people to do. It seems like for some people the, the breads are kind of tough to cut out. The sweets are kind of tough to cut out. So what you can do is you can just give yourself like one day where you have a little bit of sweets or a little bit of pasta. And that's what I do in general, uh, at least now. I mean, I've kind of got to a weight where I'm not like trying to get much skinnier. And uh, because of that, I do have maybe like one day a week or whenever I, I guess whenever I feel like it, but I guess my, whenever I feel like it is a reasonable amount. You tell some people, okay, you can have sweets one day a week and they'll just eat like 24 Snickers bars. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, you go and you, you have a little something. You know, you have a dessert at the restaurant once a week or you have a beer when you're watching a, a football game or something like that. Obviously, beer, alcohol, etc. is included in bad drinks. If you're going to drink uh, alcohol, I suggest you drink exactly red wine. Um, that's going to be one that's not too high in sugar, not too high in carbs, and is, you know, they claim it's shown that it has some benefits, which is probably a bunch of lies. <laughs> uh, one, one thing, I'll probably sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but anything the government tells you about nutrition and health is pretty incorrect, so... Don't listen to them. They're going to tell you you need, you know, five servings of bread a day and a bunch of fruit, and that's just absolutely not true. That's that's what you need to do if you want to be overweight. All right, healthy stuff. Here's what you need to eat a lot of. You need to eat a lot of lean protein, which is fish, chicken, and some beef. People say grass-fed beef is better for you. I have not really worried about that too much. I don't eat a ton of beef anyways. Um, grass-fed beef is much more expensive than grain-fed beef for whatever reason. Uh, vegetables. Avocados are a very good source of healthy fat. You do need to get fat in your diet. A lot of people think of fat as bad, but there are good fats. Um, avocados in particular are very high in healthy fat. And also some nuts are very high in healthy fat, but you don't want to eat a ton of nuts because, again, if you eat a ton of those, they're very dense and they will 
make you overweight. <laughs> what it amounts to is that if you eat a ton of anything, you're probably going to get big. However, the stuff on the do not eat list, if you eat even just a little bit of that, you're going to have a tough time losing weight, unless you're extraordinarily active. Uh, but yeah, vegetables, pretty much any vegetable is good. Avocado, cucumber, uh, tomatoes are actually a fruit, but they are very good for you as well. Um, drinks, water and green tea are particularly great for you. Whenever I play poker, I pretty much drink a cup of green tea every level, and I think it's pretty beneficial. So basically what it boils down to, what you need to be eating are lean meats, healthy carbs, healthy fats, and water. And, you know, that doesn't really sound like a lot of fun, but if you just get in the groove and start sticking with it, you'll find that it's not quite as tough as you think it is. I mean, I thought it'd be impossible to cut out a lot of this stuff. So what I've found uh, is that something like Chipotle, you know, a lot of people think of Chipotle is a big, big, thick burrito. But in reality, if you go there and you get a burrito bowl, which basically consists of beans, have them drain the sauce out of the beans because the sauce is full of uh, salt and whatnot. So basically you have a bunch of dry beans. <laughs> uh, you have onions, bell peppers, get like chicken or steak, either one's fine. Get some guacamole, which is effectively avocados. And pico de gallo, which is a bunch of uh, tomatoes. If you get that and eat it, that is a very filling meal. And it costs maybe $6, and it's not bad at all. And obviously you can make it at your house a lot cheaper. So stuff like that is just a very easy way to do something on a daily basis that is pretty healthy. And, uh, you know, some other examples, you can have like salmon, like grilled salmon or grilled chicken with some vegetables, whatever. Obviously, fresh stuff is better for you. You don't want to be putting a ton of salt on stuff. But, uh, yeah, what it really boils down to, if you cut out grains and sugar, you'll probably get pretty skinny pretty fast. All right, buffets. I put this in here particularly for the people on the cruise boat because on a cruise boat, whenever you go on there, they just feed you buffets pretty much 24-7. A lot of people think that if they go to a buffet, they have to eat everything they see. And that's not true, <laughs> believe it or not. I used to feel that way, and I'm, I mean, everyone I know who I was raised around feels that way, but that is absolutely not the truth. You, if you have portion control, you can go to a buffet and you can have a very, very healthy, clean meal most of the time. So you get grilled options, like you get grilled chicken, grilled fish. Don't get the fish that's like fried and covered in butter. Don't get fried chicken. Fried stuff is obviously breaded stuff, which is a grain. Don't eat fried stuff. Um, eat vegetables that aren't covered in butter and sauce. You know, usually you can find some sort of like peas and carrots or green beans or asparagus. Asparagus are usually covered in butter, unfortunately, because asparagus is pretty good for you too. Um, broccoli, you usually find a decent broccoli that's not covered in stuff. You can find um, stuff on the salad bar, like just tomatoes or onions and whatnot on the salad bar, usually pretty good. Avoid dessert, or as an option, instead of dessert, have a little bit of fruit. You know, have some watermelon and strawberries. And just realize that you don't have to eat until you're stuffed. I, this is something that I kind of realized recently, is that you don't really have to eat just because it's time to eat. And, you know, growing up, if, you know, when it, when it got 6 o'clock, it's time to eat dinner. And that's not necessarily what you need to be doing. If you're not hungry come dinner time, you probably don't need your dinner. All right, other good stuff that I have found out personally... Living Fuel Super Green, here's a picture of it. Uh, this is by far my favorite supplement I've ever found. It's kind of expensive, but it is extraordinarily good. Um, basically, you just take two scoops of this, put it in water, and drink it. And that will be a meal, and it's an extraordinarily he healthy meal. You need to get omega-3 fatty acids, which are effectively fish oil. You can also get them in uh, flaxseed oil some other oils. Uh, this Living Fuel Super Greens has it built right in. Uh, also, if you go to Living Fuel's site, they also have a omega-3 fatty acid. Apparently, it's supposed to help with brain function. I don't know if it's actually true. Who knows? But uh, there's been just tons of research that it is functional. So, omega-3 fatty acids. A lot of nutritionists say you should take it pretty much daily. So, look into that. Um... And then a multivitamin. You can get a, just a good multivitamin from the store that will give you a lot of the stuff that you need that you probably miss from food. Uh, D3 is also something else that you may want to get if you're not outside a lot, which obviously most poker players are inside all the time. You probably need to get a D3 supplement because you get that from sunlight, and if you don't get sunlight, you'll obviously be lacking in that. Okay, so that's that. Um, standard poker diet. Here's what I do whenever I am... 
playing poker. For breakfast, like I said, I'll have the Living Fuel Super Greens. For lunch, I usually get some sort of fish steak or chicken with some vegetables. Uh, what I would be doing in Vegas a lot of the time, like during the World Series, I would wake up, have my Living Fuel Super Greens, go to the gym, work out, come home, change, go to Chipotle on the way to the casino, and, um, you know, like I said, I'd get a burrito bowl there. When I say burrito bowl, it's basically everything that's in the burrito minus the tortilla and minus the rice. Don't get the rice. That's effectively what a burrito bowl is. Um, so I would get that. That's thoroughly healthy. And then usually for dessert, I'd have buffet. Uh, and the Rio buffet actually has a pretty decent amount of relatively healthy options. They usually have some sort of grilled fish there that's not too bad. Um, you can usually get some sort of grilled chicken. They had beets there. Um, beets are... You always have to be careful getting stuff that's like a root because kind of like a potato. It's very starchy, but beets are pretty good for you, so I would always have like a ton of beets there. Um, so I anyways, even like at a, at a buffet at the Rio, it's easy enough to find something that's healthy. So that's usually what I would eat on my standard day at like the World Series of Poker. Oops. All right, how I work out. First off, don't expect immediate results. I think everyone that goes and works out and they work out for a time or two and they just feel extraordinarily sore. They're like, man, why am I not seeing results? You got to realize that fitness is a really slow process, assuming you do it correctly and you don't try to hurt yourself. I mean, you can certainly go in there and just try to, you know, pile on weights or something or do something extraordinarily hard, like going out and running a marathon tomorrow, which you probably won't be able to do. <laughs> um, but you have to realize it's a really slow process. Something else I've learned over years of, I say years, like I'm some sort of old guy, over a few years of study and research, I've done a lot of studying and research on fitness, is that you don't actually need machines to work out. So, you know, you don't actually need to belong to a gym. As uh, you'll find that a lot of machines at the gym only work out tiny muscle groups that put a huge amount of strain on your joints. And that's not really what you want to be doing. You want to be able to build strength across your whole body. And the way you do that is by using your body weight to work out. So, um, this is from a book that I'll talk about a little bit later, but there are six progressive workouts. What this means is that you start off really easy. So, for example, um, say we want to start with a push-up. Everybody knows what a push-up is. Some people can't do a push-up, though. So what you do is you put your hands on the wall and do some push-ups against the wall. And obviously this is going to be easy for most people, but some people, particularly older people that have not worked out for a long time, will have a tough time with this. And eventually you slowly progress further and further until eventually you're doing push-ups with one arm. And I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm working towards that step. And again, it's a slow process. It's not like you're going to be doing regular push-ups today and then one-arm push-ups in a week or even a month or even a year. You have to realize that these, this is a long process and you're going to get extraordinarily strong all along the way. Anyway, as a pull-up, everyone knows what a pull-up is. A little tip for a pull-up, if you can't actually find a pull-up bar, you can put a towel over the top of a door. Like open up a door at your house, one that's not flimsy, obviously. And you can uh, put a towel over that, grasp the top of it, and do pull-ups from there. Found out that from that, and that was pretty cool, and it worked out well. Uh, very deep squats. A lot of people, when they do squats, they go like halfway down. You need to go down to where your butt's almost touching the ground, kind of like a catcher at a baseball game. Um, but again, all these have progressive movements. I'll, I'll talk about the book that these are in later. Hanging leg raise, which some people may not know what that is. This is a hanging leg raise here. Basically, you grab a bar, lift your legs. You can do this uh, laying on the ground on your back. You can lift your legs up. That's a, a, re a relatively easier step. You find that doing something like this for like 10 rotation or 10, 10 reps, and then you know two or three sets is actually really hard to do. I can't do it at all. Um, I can do it with my knees, not with my full legs straight. Handstand push-ups, which is basically where you do a handstand and then you do push-ups. <laughs> That's pretty tough. Uh, the toughest version of that is a one-armed handstand push-up. I'm nowhere near that. That seems impossible to me. And then back bends. A lot of people really neglect their back. And you'll realize if you do a lot of back bends that you develop really thick back muscles that are very strong. And apparently that nurtures your spine and apparently makes you smarter, people claim. Having like a well-protected spine will somehow make it better. So anyways... That's that. I'll discuss how I found out about that stuff a little bit later. Cardio. Long runs are much less beneficial for you than high-intensity interval training. And this is something I found out probably a little bit too late because I always had a goal. I remember when I first started working out when I was maybe like 23 or so, I decided I wanted to run a marathon one day just because that seemed like the most impossible thing that anyone could do. And 
And because of that, that was always the goal in my back of my mind, and I always wanted to get to that. However, long runs are actually not good for you whatsoever. And if you do a lot of stuff, if you look up uh, like the the age that a lot of marathon runners die, it's usually relatively young, something like 70 years old, 60 years old. And it's because they put a ton of calories into their body and they wear their bodies out by running all the time. And that's obviously not what I want. And you'll also notice a bunch of marathon runners are really skinny. And I don't want to be skinny. I want to be functional with, you know, strong, strong muscles and whatnot. So car- long distance of cardio, like getting on the treadmill and running at five miles an hour, or six miles an hour for 30 minutes is really not going to do a ton for you. A much better way to do the training is to run really hard for a short period of time, like between two and five minutes, completely recover, as in, you know, you go back to effectively resting heart rate, then you do it again, and you do that maybe five or six times. So what I would do is I would go to the treadmill, put it on like 12 miles an hour, maybe a four or five percent incline, and then just run really hard for like two minutes. And you'll find that if you do that, you will be very tired. (laughs) And obviously you progress and you work up to this type of thing. Um, I have kind of bad knees, so what I've ha- I've noticed I've had to do whenever I get up to like that intensity, I'll end up hurting myself. So I have to do I have to tone it down a little bit and just do slightly longer runs at less intensity. But that uh, will s- still be very beneficial for you. Um, a lot of cardio machines all actually have a high intensity interval training setting. I know if, uh, uh, they have a I can't talk. They have these ellipticals at the gym. I think all you guys know what an elliptical trainer is, and they'll have a interval training setting. So what you do is you put it on the interval training and at first it'll start you off on an easy setting and then about two or three minutes later it'll put you on a really hard setting. But the really hard setting actually is not really hard. So if it has you at like one setting for the base, the easy one, move that up to like five or six initially so that's kind of hard. And then whenever you're on the hard part, make that really hard. Like say the thing goes up to 20 total, put it on like 16 or 18. Like really, really hard to where you can barely move the thing. And if you do that, you will get very strong very fast. And what happens is that you're going to burn calories for something like eight hours after you're done with the workout because your body just takes – it has a hard time recovering from these really really hard training exercises. So anyways, that's that. Uh, High-intensity interval training is much better than long, easy runs, even though you'll find that if you try to run a marathon – it's, it's not easy. <laughs> um, okay. Next thing, isometrics. What isometrics is, is basically it's flexing a muscle, holding it for a while, and then letting go. So at the poker table, say you're just sitting there watching a hand, you got your arms under the table, flex your biceps and hold them for, you know, a minute or something. You know, flex it relatively hard, and you'll find it's kind of hard to hold a nice hard flex for a little bit of time. And, you know, you don't want to look like you're shaking or going crazy or anything. You don't look like a crazy person at the poker table. Just look there, you know, try to hold the muscle, keep it firm, and hold it for a while. Release it, take a while off, and do it again. Uh, You can do this with all sorts of body parts. Abs are a pretty good one to do at the poker table because you're just sitting there and they're ready to be flexed. Um, You can do your shoulders, triceps, neck, head. You can do all sorts of stuff at the poker table. You just have to be creative. Uh, but obviously, make sure you do other sorts of body weight training. Otherwise, you'll grow big, useless muscles. Because you really will develop a decent amount of muscle mass just by flexing. But if you don't like follow through with movements, you'll find that you become slightly muscle-bound with muscles that are big but not really useful. So be careful with that and isometrics. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for what I know about fitness that I want to share in this short video. Some resources. Convict Conditioning by Paul Wade, 1 and 2. This is where I just... Well, I guess it's not really where I discovered about um, bodyweight training. There are a few other books I read before I read this one, but this is the one that I think is probably the easiest to read and lays out everything in a very simple step-by-step process where it'll take you from being completely useless with your muscles to very strong over, you know, could take you forever to get to some of the hard steps or you may never get through the hard steps. You know, I bet that, like, the vast majority of people that start trying to do a one-arm push-up probably never get there just because it's really, really hard. And, you know, that's not saying that you're not strong or anything. It's just saying it's very, very tough to do. So, anyways, Convict Conditioning by Paul Wade. Uh, Poker Isometrics by Anton Drake. I discovered this on Amazon. I I just – I pretty much buy and read, like, every poker book that comes out on the market. And I'm like, huh, Poker Isometrics, what is that? So, I bought that, read it, and I thought it was actually pretty useful. And I – have found that sitting at the poker table when there's nothing going on 
You might as well be doing something, and if you can make yourself slightly stronger while you're sitting there, you might as well. The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. He also wrote this book called The 4-Hour Workweek, which t basically tries to get you to not spend so much time doing actual work and spend more time enjoying life. Uh, he wrote a book about the body, and the diet that I recommended you guys can be found in that book. I believe he calls it the slow carb diet. He actually suggests taking a day off and kind of doing whatever you want, but I'm not a huge fan of that because I feel like it's kind of unnecessary, at least for me personally. But I do see how some people could look forward to that kind of thing, and it could make the diet easier too. But you have to realize, when it's, I say it's a diet, it's not actually a diet. It's more so of a way of life. You know, I'm not going to go back to eating breads and cereals and grains all the time just because that's what society tells me to do. Uh, you have to realize that some of the stuff is going to be against the against the grain, you know? I mean, <laughs> against the grain, yeah. Okay, so say, like, you know, you go to Starbucks and you want to get food. You, get, you buy your coffee and then you try to get food there. All they're going to sell you is a bunch of bread. And you simply can't eat any of that stuff. So you have to go somewhere else to get your, to get some, like, eggs and beans or whatnot. Every morning when I'm in New York City, well, maybe not every morning, but a lot of mornings, I usually wake up with my girlfriend and I cook us eggs, beans, and uh, some water. And that's, that's what we have for breakfast every morning. And we're both pretty happy with it, and it's very good. Um, okay, next, Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Ben Greenfield is a Ironman triathlete, and he has a... Very long-running podcast. You can get it on iTunes. It has, I think they're on the 230th episode or something like that at this point. And he does a lot of question and answers where people call in or write in and ask questions. And he also interviews people that are on, like, the cutting edge of fitness. Some of the stuff he gets into is a little bit quacky from time to time. Um, I'm not going to say it's definitely crap quacky, but stuff like chiropractic and uh, acupuncture, stuff like stuff like that that hasn't actually been proven to be effective, or it's been proven to be effective but is significantly less effective than traditional, you know, going to the doctor. Uh, he, he sort of goes into that kind of stuff, so I, I kind of have to bash on him a little bit for that because a lot of that stuff is just a pure placebo effect. However, I still like his podcast. I think it's very good. He also does a shorter podcast called Get Fit Guy, which is like a six-minute six podcast, whereas Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast is like an hour and a half long. So whenever I'm at the gym, what I do is I put these podcasts on my phone, and I just listen to them at about two times speed. So say the podcast is an hour and a half, I usually get through it in about 45 minutes. And I think that's a good way to get a lot of content thrown into my brain pretty quick, especially whenever I'm effectively not doing anything else. You know, when I'm at the gym, just doing my workouts. Um, last thing, Living Fuel Super Greens. Like I said, I love the stuff. I think it's great. Whenever I travel, I put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in my luggage, and have it every morning, so... Definitely check that out. I also use this thing called a blender ball, which I think that's what it's called. Blender bottle, something like that. Anyways, what it is, it's a plastic bottle and has like a spiral wisp. Whisk? Is that the word? Yeah, a whisk in it. Uh, and you put your protein powder in there, which in this in this uh, situation is Living Fuel Super Greens. Water, you shake it up, and then it blends it up pretty nice for you. So check out that. You can buy those on Amazon. Or also the Living Fuel Super Greens site, they have... Uh, they have those for sale there as well. So that's that's going to wrap it up. If you guys like this, let me know. If you thought it was stupid, let me know. <laughs> you know, it seems like a lot of what I have learned from poker, I've really just, I guess I've taken in so much information in the poker world. I've tried to consolidate it for you guys and give you a very good, a very good, very streamlined resource and float the turn and my books. And I, I guess I want to do the same thing for fitness. I've found what has without a doubt works for me. I mean, I've, I've, I've had trainers and stuff in the past that just simply didn't work because they would give me bad information. They would be like, yeah, if you go do 15 minutes of running, then lift some weights, you can eat all the peanut butter and jelly and cereal you want. I mean, I had a trainer that made me eat cereal every morning and that was just what he told me to do. And so I was training with him. I was getting strong, but I was just getting fatter. I'm thinking, what in the world is going on here? This is obviously not right. And it's just, there's just so much misinformation out there, exactly like in the poker world. And if I can consolidate it for you guys and tell you at least what's worked for me, just like in poker, what has worked for me, I have no problem doing that. So even though I'm not a fitness ex expert at all, I hope this has been beneficial. So thank you guys if you made it this far, and please let me know what you think. This has been Jonathan Little for FloatTheTurn.com. Thanks for watching.